Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Boat Dealer Profits Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Selhorst, and we're committed to helping you sell more boats, make more money, and have more fun. I'm really excited about our guest today, um, Jonathan Sweet from uh, Boating Industry Magazine and the Top 100 Dealer Program. Jonathan, thank you for, uh, for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me, Matt. Uh, I'm really excited. I know you've been um, been in the industry and, and around in, in several capacities, being the uh, the editor at Boating Industry Magazine, now running the Top 100 Dealer Program, um, which is just that program over the how, how long has it been around? Uh, Ten years almost. Uh, this is actually the four, this will be the 14th year. 14th year. So it, it's um, it's just growing and getting getting stronger and stronger and more and more valuable for the industry. Talk to, for, for anybody listening that doesn't know uh, what the program is, kind of tell them a little bit about it and, and uh, why it's been such a big focus for, for you. Sure. So when we started the Top 100 program of boating industry, there really wasn't anything in the industry to recognize great dealers who were, going, who were doing better than the other dealers out there. As we all know, there's a wide variety of dealers in the industry, and the, the team at Boating Industry felt there really needed to be an effort to recognize those great dealers. And at the same time, take the information from those great dealers, those best practices, and then share them with the entire industry. So that, that's kind of what was the genesis of the program. And, and what we do is we get the applications in uh, it's for any boat dealer in North America can apply. And uh, it's a pretty involved process, but basically then we go through a lot of different factors and pick the top 100 dealers and recognize them every year at our gala event, which is on the uh, last night of the Marine Dealer Conference in Expo in Orlando as well as uh, on the website and in the January issue of the magazine. Yeah, absolutely. And, and your gala, if, uh, if you haven't seen everybody in their, in their tuxedos, and, uh, and it's a, a big event. Um, and you also, with the, with the recognition, you, you pick the top 100. Um, what are some of the criteria that you really look at? Because it's not, it's not the top 100 biggest dealers. I, I think it, you guys really do a good job of focusing on the top 100 uh, most innovative and, and truly best dealers, regardless of size. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there are dealers on the list. We've had dealers in the top 20 that are maybe only doing a few million a year. Uh, so there are companies, this is not about, as you said, not about size. Certainly we're looking for financial success, but that means we're more concerned about, uh, is it a profitable company rather than overall volume of sales? So we're looking at the financial aspect, of course, but also Involvement in the industry. How do they promote the boating lifestyle? Are they out there doing a good job reaching out to potential boaters? Do they support things like Discover Boating? Are they involved in associations like the Marine Retailers Association, the National Marine Manufacturers Association, or their local uh, marine trade associations? We look at how they market. Are they doing innovative things in marketing, uh, whether it's their how they approach boat shows, how what they do with their digital marketing, social media, email marketing, websites, all that sort of stuff. And we look at their, their customer service. How are their CSI scores? We look at service department. Uh, we look at efficiency and the methods and strategies they use to get the most out of their service department. Really, it's about running a great business in all aspects of the business. Yeah, and, um, and one of the things that I think you do a great job of is, is you have the, the top 10 that you, that you lay out for 10, and then everybody else is, is just in the group because I would imagine it gets really hard as you're sitting around that boardroom table trying to, uh, to number everybody from, uh, you know, from 11 to, to 100. Uh, what, what does that process look like, and, and who's all involved in, in the, um, you know, the setting the top 100? Sure. So we actually, we rank the top 21 through 20. And then, yeah, the other 80 are recognized as just being part of the top 100. And that really came about from the feedback from the dealers. At one point in the history of the program, we did rank all 100. But as I always say, nobody wants to be number 98. Um, there's, yeah. you, know, <laughs> right. you know, people want to, you know, so what we found is the dealers, from talking to the dealers about it, they wanted to be recognized that they are toward the top of the list with a number in front of their name. And that's valid. It allows people to say, hey, I am one of the best dealers in the country. I'm number 15, I'm number 10, whatever it may be. But for a lot of dealers, they want to be recognized as being part of the top 100, which certainly with thousands of dealers in this country uh, and in Canada, as we do United States and Canada, it's uh, being in the top 100. It's, it's certainly uh, a great honor on its own, whatever that number is. But, yep. you know, so the process then is it's a pretty involved process. So we do, you know, the applications, anybody who's filled out the application knows it's a long application and that's by design. We want to make sure we have a lot of information about these companies. So 
uh, the team that's involved is generally uh, the staff at Boating Industries. It would be myself and then the editorial team. Uh, we uh, do, you know, we do kind of first reads of the applications as they come in, and then we get together as a team and talk about, all right, who are the companies that are candidates for this top 20? And uh, we have a lot of discussions about that. We take that in. We usually meet. Everyone goes back off on their own, does some more reading. We meet again, uh, kind of go through that cycle. And then uh, as a group, rank those top 20 and pick a dealer of the year. And um, also throughout the process, we do some checking up with others in the industry, uh, suppliers, boat builders, a anyone that we feel like is important to check with on a given company if we want to say we want to get feedback on them. But the final decision comes down to the boating industry team. Okay, excellent. And then the one thing, if, if uh, you're listening to this and you haven't read that uh, January issue of Boating Industry Magazine, I mean, that is like, you know, sitting through and getting somebody's notes from MDCE for the past 10 years of best practices. I mean, you, you lay out kind of what everybody does on a dealer by dealer basis. And, um, and then you also get your, your best of category. So your best in marketing, your best in service, your best in training. Um, how do you pick out kind of those golden nuggets that, uh, that you pass along to everybody else in the industry? Sure. You know, I think that's one of the actually best things about the top 100. A lot of people get focused on the recognition of the 100 companies, which is certainly important. But what I feel is the biggest strength of it is that we're taking the information from these great companies, companies like One Water, companies like Marine Max, who have won Deal of the Year in the past, or great companies like Russell Marine and Strong Marine, some of our top 10 companies. And we're taking that information and we're sharing it with everybody. So, you know, unless you were, say, in a top, you know, in a 20 group with some of these guys, you're getting information that you never would get, which I think is great. And so, yeah, we look through and we look for what's interesting, what's unique, what new things are being done in the industry, what new things are companies doing that are, is really working well for them. And we, we take that information and we, we use it not only in that, that January issue that recognizes the top 100, but really try to use it throughout the year. Uh, you know, I, I write a column in every issue where I talk about the top 100. We also have a, in every issue of the magazine, have what we call a top 100 spotlight, which recognizes one of the top 100 companies and talks about something interesting and unique they're doing uh, that people can learn from. And then just generally in the editorial in both the magazine and online, we use a lot of that information to share it just over the course of the year. And really it's a great way to improve the entire industry. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, you guys have a huge, almost a, a database of, of um, excellent ideas and best practices. And one of the things that I love is, you know, going through that issue and all of the issues that reference the top 100 dealers and, and just, it just gets your juices flowing. You know, if, if you're strategizing for your year, you know, you can go through there and figure out whatever you're focusing on and just, you know, you get idea after idea that can build upon themselves and spark a new idea for you. And um, it, it's, it's very powerful. Um, and then you also do the, the best of, which some of the, some of the categories I, I mentioned, what are some of your favorite things that I, I'm trying to, I'm flipping through the magazine here, trying to find your, uh, um, your top pick and some of your best ideas. What, what can you think of off the top of your head that kind of jumps out as, man, that was, that's something that I, I wish more dealers would do, or that was so innovative. Sure. Yeah. So like you said, we do do those class awards and that's, uh, Every year we recognize eight dealers who are doing something, uh, I don't know if you'd say unique, but um, doing something that really stands out and they stand out in their marketing or they stand out in their uh, service department, their customer service, uh, best events. I mean, we recognize a very varying categories each year. But, you know, some of the things that really stand out to me is really the great work being done in the, in the marketing. And uh, I know it's a near and dear to your heart as well, but um, <laughs> you got it. Of course. You know, I think I've been really impressed by a lot of the, the work being done uh, in the digital side, which it's been a, a huge change, uh, you know, in the last five years, I think five years ago, you know, I'd be talking to dealers and very few of them were doing really much of anything. They had a website, maybe an email newsletter, but they weren't really doing much beyond that. Most of them weren't doing video. They weren't doing social media if they were, it was very limited. And to see what's being done now is pretty impressive. You know, I think of things like uh, One Water Marine, who was our dealer of the year the last two years, they did a really creative approach using uh, Pandora, you know, the, stream, the streaming radio service for those people who don't yep. know. And 
and using that and sponsoring a channel and advertising on there. And they found that was a key demographic for them hitting that, uh, let's see, what's what I'm looking for, hitting that high-end audience that they were really looking for, for buyers. They found that that demographic was uh, very targeted for them. And, you know, that was, that was one that really impressed me. I think if you look at what uh, Pride Marine Group, who was our best marketing, who won our best marketing, best in class award last year, um, just their approach in, in using social media and digital. And uh, they launched, a, for example, a Facebook video campaign to promote the Toronto Boat Show, which is for Canadian dealers is kind of the really big boat show. And yeah, absolutely. They uh, did a great job using Facebook videos to promote what they're, to promote the boats they're going to be having at the show, ahead of the show, to get, and they targeted those with targeted advertising to people maybe who had liked the particular brands they carry. And they found that it, uh, they got, you know, thousands of views of these videos. They got hundreds of more people liking their page, and then that converted into more people coming to see them at the show. So just great things like that. I think, uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many things, as you said, that, you know, you could, you could go on and on. Yeah, and it's it, to me, it's the it's the little teeny idea because you know, obviously you're not you're not giving away their here's their whole campaign that they ran, but they they ran, but it just it just sparks that idea of oh here's how we could use that, and that's how I, I always encourage people to look at my information and and the stuff you read is is don't ask oh you know will that work for me, but how can I make that work for me, and I think that's a that's a great approach when you're in any training or, or learning environment. Um, so that, that's interesting. You said, you know, you, you've been doing it for 14 years and there's been a huge swing. I mean, I would imagine your first three or four years, it was all print marketing. And now, you know, what would you say the, the, uh, pendulum has swung to 80%, you know, if you, if you discount boat shows to digital, it's probably close to that. Yeah. I think it, it varies from market to market, but really the embrace of digital is, has been a, the biggest change in marketing I've seen in the last few years. Yeah, that's got to be a that's got to be a very interesting um, evolution because 14 years is a you know a short time. That was what 2004. Um, I mean that that's incredible. So what are what are some ways that um, that dealers that you've seen have used the top 100 status to the status get that word out right? Um, use the top 100 status to kind of um, implement in their marketing strategies in their um, communication strategies. Sure, you know I think. The smart dealers recognize that there's a lot of value to this to be able to go out there and say, hey, I'm the, you know, I'm one of the top 100 dealers, or if you have, you know, if you've got that number in front of your name, we were number five. Um, I've seen dealers talk about, hey, we're the only, we're the only top 100 dealer in this market. So, I mean, smart dealers are out there promoting it. And a lot of what it takes is just being out there and putting in front of consumers and explaining it. That's the biggest thing. We do put together every year for the top 100 dealers, they get a, a marketing best practices guide from us that we've put together with input from other top 100 dealers. And a lot of it is just putting out there, telling consumers what it means. So, you know, at your boat show, having those signs, and we have templates that we can help the dealers with who make the list to, for, boat show template, for boat show signs. Uh, being out there on certainly digital media, we've seen, it's been interesting. Last couple of years, we've seen some dealers uh, go ahead and they've live streamed their winning their award at the, at the gala from oh, the Facebook great. page. Um, yeah, that's great. A couple years ago uh, would have been, uh, well, three years ago now in, in 2015 when uh, Gordy's Lakefront Marine won their second dealer of the year award, they actually did a live stream back to their dealership as well as on their Facebook page of when they won dealer of the year. Because dealer of the year is, is the only winner who knows they're going to be dealer of the when they go into the gala, nobody knows what they've won except they're on the top 100, except for the dealer right. of the year because they they okay. give a speech. They give a speech, so we give them. A, they know ahead of time. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice of you, John. So that's good. Um, so they knew ahead of time, but things like that. But even if you don't, even though you're on the top 100, you could live stream some stuff. We've seen people do that really the last couple of years, which has been really interesting. Um, you know, but certainly promote it throughout the year. Talk about what it means. They talk about what it means and say, "Hey, there are you know." thousands of boat dealers in North America and we're one of the top 100 and here's why. So they talk about, the, again, the things that we use in, in making those decisions, but you know, it, they, the smart ones put it everywhere. You put it in your print ad, you, they've got window clings. We actually provide window, window clings for the dealers. They can put up on your, uh, right there on, on the door of your dealership. Um, they've got buttons on their website, run the logo on their website. What does it mean? 
uh, again, it's like I said, promoted in social media. Uh, we've seen dealers really do all sorts of creative things. And it's really about just putting the word out there and saying, hey, this is important. It's kind of like any of the other awards you get. If you're a certified dealer, if you are one of Brunswick's top dealers or whatever it may be, you know, tell the consumers about it. I mean, it's, it's, it's simple, but we find a lot of times that's that simple step is something some dealers aren't doing. It's like, hey, you got well, yeah, and it's Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I had uh, Bob McCann on one of my first ones talking about the uh, dealer certification program. It was the same thing as, you know, you've got to, you've got to do it. And then you've actually got to let everybody know and, and why it's so valuable. But I mean, it's essentially one of the huge things I promote is, is social proof, third party validation from your customers, testimonials, Google reviews, all of that. But this is, I mean, this falls right in that line. It's we're, Hey, we're, we're one of the, or we're the best dealer in this marketplace. And then you can back it up but because we won the top 100 dealer and we're the only top 100 dealer in this marketplace. And that gauges us on service and, and um, innovation and training and all of those aspects. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's got to be powerful. Just, um, just getting the message out is, is the key. So an, another, another value that I, I say, and you can tell me if, if, if I'm right or not, is, is really just going through the application process. I mean, actually committing every year that you're going to do it and committing every year to improve your, uh, your ranking or, or get on the list if you haven't yet. Um, is that something that you see? Oh, absolutely. Um, I have a lot of dealers who tell us that this is an important part of their strategy and their business planning for the year is going through the application because a lot of the questions we ask are the same things that they need to answer in putting together their business plan and putting together their, their forecasting and their, you know, their strategy for future growth. Um, it's been interesting to see a lot of dealers in their first, first year they apply. Uh, it really helps them improve because they look at it and go, you know what? I didn't have an answer to that question about, you know, my dispatch system in my service department or how we, you know, improve customer service, how we hand our, how we help train our employees, things like that, that maybe they just, you know, they go, wait, I didn't actually have an answer to that question. So that's something I need to think about. So certainly it's something that helps people. Imp- we find according to the dealers, that it's really just something that helps them improve year after year. I think the biggest example of that was uh, legendary Marine, which is now part of one water, but before they were part of one water was actually our dealer of the year in 2012 and 2013. I remember talking to Fred Pace, who was the founder and at that time, the owner of legendary, and he told me after they won their second Dealer of the Year award, so this is a company that just won twice, was now, uh, and the way it works is somebody wins twice, they go into the Hall of Fame and aren't eligible right. to win Dealer of the Year anymore. So they've won it twice. They can't win again. But he said, you know, I'm still making my team fill out this application. We're going through this as part of our process. So you're talking about one of the best dealerships in the country. And they said, you know what? This is still valuable to us. We're going to do this again, even though. We can't win. We can't. We're going to fill out this application as part of our planning process, which to me was yeah, pretty powerful. That, yeah, that, that's incredible um, because that just going through the process has value in it. And I would imagine that over the 14 years that it's almost like your application has evolved with the progression of the, of the top 100 dealer. So you're asking more targeted questions of what makes a top 100 dealer. So just, just by seeing that evolution, you would see which way your dealership needs to go. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We've, you know, we obviously change the application year to year, um, look at questions and what needs to change as the market changes. I mean, obviously when this program started, it was, you know, pre great, pre great recession, pre, you know, the voting market crash, all the things, the housing market crash, all these things that have drastically changed. Um, so the, you know, the process of course has changed too, and the program has changed, but yeah, so we ask different types of questions, you know, uh, great cat example is, is boat shows. Um, a lot of boat shows have gone away, so people have had to change their boat show strategies. Uh, the rise of digital has changed the way people are doing boat shows. You know, all these things that are important trends in the industry. And, yeah, we try to reflect those in the questions we ask. Yeah, that, that's great. That's great. Well, is there, is there anything that jumps out at you, one or, one or two things, and that's a, a common theme through the applications or the, the ones that, um, that impress you the most or have the best um, – uh, success as a dealer that you can share with uh, with our listeners? Sure. I think the biggest thing is the constant improvement. So what I mean by that is one of the most important questions on the form is we ask them, what have you done to improve from the previous year? So this year we're asking you, what did you do in 2017 to improve from 2016? And the best dealers 
are always getting better, no matter how good they are. And it's one of the things I'm blown away from when somebody wins the deal of the year award. And I'll use one water against there, our most recent one as an example. And, you know, the charge to the team when we go through those applications is look at it with fresh eyes, just because somebody was deal of the year last year or top 10 last year doesn't mean they are again this year. And you look at these companies, these, these good companies, and it's astounding how much when you look at a great company like a One Water, you know, a Sail and Ski, a Russell Marine, a, you know, a, uh, a Seattle Boat Company, some of our top dealers, how much they get better from year to year. They're not sitting on their laurels. And these are great companies. And they're already great companies, but they're not willing to just sit there and not improve. They're constantly right. getting better. Yep. Yeah, that's and it's you know the the old saying either either growing and improving or you're or you're dying and and that's uh you know I think that's how they got to be as good as they are because that's just a a culture um, a culture to the dealership. Um, so what um, what haven't I asked you about the top 100 that I should have because I, I know it from I I was in the top 100 dealer a few of my clients are top 100 dealers I encourage them to to go through the application process. Um, what is something that I may not know, or I, I may not have asked that I should have about the top 100 dealer program? Well, I think an important thing for people to know is, is the process can be daunting. I think when you look at it, if you haven't applied before, cause we, we do an online application. So I can see when somebody has gone in and started the application and we get a couple hundred every year who start the application and don't finish it. Um, and, some, and I think some of that is because it can be overwhelming when you look at it. One of the things I want to make sure dealers know is, one, if you have questions or need help, you can ask us for help. I'm always surprised by how many dealers tell me, well, I wasn't sure if I could ask you a question. And of course, of course okay. you can ask me a question. Like they thought <laughs> yeah, it was going to somehow you know, be a ding on their score if they asked for help. And it's, yeah. you know, maybe you're not sure what exactly we're looking for in a given question, or you're not sure about something on your application. So. Uh, you know, ask for help. Uh, that's one of the things I always tell people. And the second thing is start early. I mean, the application is long, certainly. That's by design because we're trying to gather a lot of information. And the dealers who apply tell us they think it should be long. It shouldn't be an easy thing. You know, it shouldn't be a one-page application. This is a, you know, we're trying to recognize great companies. So, you know, the application is available now. It's, it's available um, every year. It's available right around the 1st of January. And it's due at the end of June. So uh, you've got basically six months to work on it. Uh, and of course, like, I mean, we're all guilty of this. If you see something due June 28th, you go, man, maybe I'll start on June 15th, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, June 23rd, I, I think I can find some time. That sounds and great. then you're like, oh my God, how am I going to get this all done? What we find is the companies that really do a good job of their application, they're working on it. They're already working on it. They are, yep. cause they're, and I know that because they're asking me questions already. Um, there's some dealers, I, I always make the joke, and I won't embarrass them by saying who they are, but every year, I know as soon as the application is available, they're going to be asking for this and this and this, and it's like clockwork. They are, but that's because they're top dealers, and they start working on it in January right away. So, yep. um, you know, it is, it's not something you should put off to the last minute, I, is, is what I would say, certainly, because I don't want people to be, because it could be, it'd be overwhelming if you tried to do it all in a week. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then, the you know, you'll have done the work and, and not probably have a much of a chance to get the result because you do need to put the effort in. But but again, that's where some of the value or a lot of the value comes in is the is the effort and the process and the and the thinking about your business um, versus just the doing every day. Do you have do you have people um, that say, you know what, Jonathan, we, we're not going to do that because we don't want to give away our secrets. Is that a, an issue that you have come across? A little bit, but not as much as I would expect. I think, okay. um, you know, and obviously I, I've not been at boating industry the entire history of the program, but I think from my understanding, I think that was a bigger, was a, was a bigger issue at the beginning. I think the recession has kind of changed that a little bit and that people kind of, you know, in the way we've seen that, that we're seeing more of the manufacturers and the dealers working together too. I think kind of a all, we're all in this together mentality <laughs> coming out of the recession. Yep. And recognizing, because, you know, you've got, you're right. It would, you know, you can sit there and say, wow, you know, you know, uh, pick, pick, a, pick a dealer, but, you know, you know, well, One Water Marine has locations all over the country, so does Marine Max. And for them to sit there and say, you know, they recognize 
that sure, I guess our, our competitor could see this and do it, but they still have to do it. They have to make that decision right. to do it. Yep. And they have to dedicate to doing this great marketing program or this great thing and this great training program for their employees. And the reality is some companies just won't do that. Um, but, you know, I think the best dealers realize that, you know what, uh, everyone getting better is better for the industry because if somebody has a bad experience at a dealer and it's the first boat they buy, they may never buy another boat. So we've lost them because they went to a bad dealer. So I think yeah. a lot of dealers are like, you know what, I'd rather have good competition that's doing the right thing than bad competition that's going to scare people away from boating. Yeah, and, and it, it almost makes you raise your game. Like I think of a couple markets like Austin um, that has, I, I mean, I'm just guess, but three, maybe four top 100 dealers in Austin. I know um, right, yeah, right in that area. I, I want to say, uh, say. Yeah, because Salinski, Boat Town, and Austin Boats and Motors are there. Um, and I apologize to any of our dealers for getting somebody, but, you know, yeah, that's yeah, a great that's, example. I'm trying to, <clears throat> and, and, you know, it's, it just, that area, you walk into a dealership cause I, I've presented down there before at a, at a, um, a seminar. And so I mystery shop some dealers and they're all really good. Um, you know, so it, it makes everybody raise their game, which I think is, like you said, great for the industry and, um, and really great for the, you know, great for the company too, because it uh, issues a challenge almost that you can't Absolutely. just rest on your laurels and, and, um, just, you know, hope, hope things go well. Well, Hey, Jonathan, I, I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you joining us here. So where, where can people go to get the application to get started? This, this will probably come out in, I'm going to actually push you up. So it comes out earlier, um, come out in early March, um, in my, uh, my first one of March, where can they go, um, to get to that application and, and, um, get started? Sure. Um, you can find that on our website, which is boatingindustry.com, And then it's slash, uh, top dash 100 slash application. Now you'll also, if you just go to boatingindustry.com, you'll see there's a top 100 drop down menu. Very easy to find. Um, and it's an online application. Uh, so the great thing about it is you can go in, you can work on it, you can save it, you can work on it some more, save it. You don't have to do it all in one sitting or anything like that. And then again, certainly if people are working on it and have questions or need help, they should reach out to us. Um, you know, my, you know, my email address is just the letter J, then sweet. So S W E E T at boating industry.com. And I'm available, always available to answer questions. People have them on the process or, or anything else. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put that link in the show notes uh, for the podcast as, as well as a, uh, a link to your email address and, and everybody listening for the, the dealers that are listening. I, I, I encourage you to go and, and check out the application and, and go just commit to yourself that this year, if you haven't done it, you're going to apply for the top 100 dealer and commit to yourself that you're going to do it for the next three years, um, regardless if you get it or not. And just watch yourself improve. Watch the improvement just by going through the exercise of asking those questions or answering the questions that uh, Jonathan and the boating industry team have put together, because it really will, it'll open your eyes to opportunities that you, you may not have seen because you're too close to it. So I, I really encourage you to, to make that commitment and to do it. And I would love to talk to Jonathan, um, you know, on, on uh, July 1st and have him say, Matt, this is the, the biggest group of applications we've ever gotten. So that, that's kind of my goal. Uh, any, any last words, Jonathan, on the, on the program or anything else that you guys have going on over there that, uh, that our listeners should know about? Well, sure. You know, I think uh, one thing that I forgot to mention about something new this year for the top 100 is we're trying to step up our outreach on our part to consumers as well, just to get word out there to the consumers that the program exists. Uh, certainly not to replace what you, what dealers are doing on the local level, but just as to get the word out there. So um, we, we've launched a campaign this year. We're actually going to be running ads in uh, consumer public consumer boating publications uh, that will promote the top 100 as well. Uh, the first one, uh, we'll be coming up. Uh, we're, we're working with Pontoon and Deck Boat Magazine, and their March issue is the first one people will see. But we also have some other ones coming up later in the year. So again, it's just another thing we're trying to do to make sure consumers are aware of the program and know it exists, uh, just to kind of help dealers that are part of the program get the word out there. Yeah, that that's fantastic. And and um, for for you top 100 dealers, go out and grab those magazines. You know, <laughs> get, get a copy of those magazines and uh, and use them in your in your dealership because that's that's fantastic that you're promoting the program on top of what they're doing, um, what they're doing locally. So, okay. So it's boatingindustry.com, 
um, slash top dash 100 application. And um, so go check that out. And I'm sure if you just go to boating industry and start clicking around, you'll find it. Um, and do, if you get, if you get stuck, don't quit, don't quit, reach out to Jonathan and, and his team and, um, and make that commitment that you'll do it. So Jay, Jonathan, I want to, I want to thank you um, for your time here today, but I also want to thank you for your support um, of myself and, and the company and, and uh, invited me to join the boating industry team and writing some articles for you guys. I, I appreciate that. Uh, when I, when I first got started, you were, you were very supportive. So I, I want to thank you for that for sure. Oh, you're welcome. Um, and uh, so everybody, go get uh, working on that application. Don't put it off till uh, till June twentieth, and um, let's uh, let's get you in that top one hundred. Thank you very much, Jonathan. All right, thank you. Wow, what a great interview with Jonathan. Um, he has been uh, amazing in the industry uh, over at Boating Industry. Now uh, running the top one hundred program, and and I only can expect bigger and better things from the top one hundred program with him uh, having a hundred percent focus on um, on that. If you have not, I really encourage you to um, to apply. If you're one of my clients listening, um, you know I, I probably encourage you to apply at some point or another. But um, it is a, a great messaging tool to say that validated by a third party, the industry magazine, um, you are, are one of the top 100 dealers in North, and, um, North America. It's just a great feather in a hat, another great thing to talk about when you use it properly within your 24-7 selling machine, within your unique selling points, and, um, and all the other tools in the splash system. It's just one more, um, one more thing to set you apart from your competition to sell more boats, make more money, and have more fun. So if you are interested in that, go check it out, uh, boatingindustry.com. Look for the top 100 dealer section, and uh, you can find that application. If um, you're interested in the splash system and learning more, about uh, the splash system, maybe having some of the components of the splash system done for you, um, reach out to us. We do um, strategy sessions where we get on the phone, we talk through your business, and um, and talk about if or, or how we can help you, if the splash system's right for you, um, if you have opportunities in your marketplace. And uh, we typically don't work with the biggest dealer in any market area. Um, we find that the most impact we can make comes with, uh, with dealers that are uh, maybe the second or third dealer in their marketplace that's really looking to step it up and saying, you know what, we need to get our marketing and our sales message straight, and that's going to be what uh, what drives us forward. So BoatDealerProfits.com slash success, and uh, you can sign up for a strategy session there. Uh, check out all of the podcasts, Boat Dealer Profits TV, uh, my boating industry articles. You can go to BoatDealerProfits.com, uh, click on the dealer section and uh, go to the resources area, and that's where you'll find all of that. Uh, a lot of great information on there, some new webinars we pushed out, boatdealerprofits.com slash webinar. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next episode.